hear you now. Okay, good, good. All right, welcome everyone. Um, I see we have a few people on the call, about six or seven. So welcome to our uh, first REACH APAC meeting of the year. My name is Monet Gascon. I am a first um, teacher here at REACH. Um, and then I also have my um, beautiful partner, uh, what do I call you? My associate, my friend, uh, Miss Judy here as well. She is our discipline coordinator here at REACH. And she's also my admin support with REACH APAC. Judy, you want to say hi? Hi, everybody. All right. And so I see we have a couple parents. We also have our um, leader, uh, Dr. Rinty online, and our vice principal, Mr. Finley, as well. So they will be here um, as support um, as we go through our presentation today. So I want to welcome everyone. Um, this uh, presentation is just kind of a APAC intro to introduce you to um, what we are trying to do, um, what we have been doing for the past year or so, um, and to garner some interest so that we can get um, more parents involved and um, get some electoral positions filled so that we can carry on and have our parents carry on the APAC um, with my support, of course, and Ms. Judy's support and the support of admin as well. So I will go ahead and jump in. Um, so Judy, you wanna go ahead and tackle this slide? Okay, so there is a vision for the APAC um, by our leader, our executive director, Dr. R Virgie Renty. The APAC is a network of research reach, excuse me, stakeholders and partners who give voice to the issues and the concerns of our parents and our students. She also has the vision of creating solutions that promote two-way communications between parents and administrators. It's really, really important to her that parents and students and the school are communicating constantly all the time to meet the needs of the children. She also wants to create community partnerships. And we also need parents as leaders in this particular uh, committee that we're trying to form. Go ahead, Monet. All right, so this is the structure of our APAC that we are going to introduce you to if this is your first time attending an APAC meeting. So the purpose of APAC is to develop, to guide, and to collaborate with our families um, and reach staff and also outside organizations. So we are striving to identify the unique academic challenges that our African-American students face. We also want to motivate our families to participate with the committee. And we also want to discuss potential program components and decide what activities we as a committee can participate in on campus. I know that looks a little different this year uh, with COVID and all, but for the future, and um, that's something that we really are striving for. So um, we plan on meeting four to six times a year. Um, definitely we sh uh, stress that involved parents really help make their voices heard when they are involved with APAC. So with saying that we would like to have at least three parent leaders for um, the rest of our 2021 year and beyond. Um, and we would like you to commit to uh, one to two years in those leadership roles. Um, what we will do, we will supply uh, templates, materials, and also just help to facilitate the process. So you definitely won't be alone. Um, we are here to support. We want to make it as easy as possible for the parents as they um, kind of take over and run the program. And uh, we offer support from admin, from staff, also from Riverside County Office of Education. We have their support. Um, and then also, of course, me and Miss Judy are always here. All right, stakeholder engagement. 
engagement is really, really important. What we found is that the kids really love it when their parents are involved. And so that's the goal of this committee is to get the parents involved in the learning process. Um, how we get this kind of involvement? Well, we've already started. We've already got two parents that have self-nominated themselves for positions. Yay! For those two parents. Uh, for example, last year we had one of our meetings and we posted lots of information that the parents didn't know. And uh, it really was a wake up call for our parents and they were able to talk to the administration. They were able to talk to teachers, Ms. Gascon, and find out what was really going on with their kids. Um, we also have a teacher and parent perspective. You get to talk to teachers, you get to talk to administrators and they get to talk to you at the same time. The bottom line is we're trying to come up with solutions together for the kids. Our goal for this committee is for our students to reduce suspension rates, to reduce chronic absenteeism, to reduce performance gaps for math, to increase testing scores, to increase parent and community partnerships, which is really key. Also to help families with parenting, communicating, voluntary, learning at home, decision-making, collaborating with community. You get to sit amongst each other and help each other. And we're there to support you the whole entire way. All right, so let's get into a look, just a small, tiny bit of data. As you guys know, or if you don't know, Dr. NT is very, very data driven. And so um, that's where we like to get our information from. So um, right now, what you are seeing is enrollment by ethnicity. So um, if you look at the African-American portion of our students, so with Breach Leadership Academy, and this is coming from our 2019-20 enrollment year. So our African-American population is around 23%. So that equals out to about approximately 138 students out of 604. And then if we look at based on with how REACH fares with Riverside Unified, Riverside County, and then also statewide, REACH um, actually has um, a very high, if not the highest, um, African-American student population. Um, enrollment by ethnicity multi-year. So um, what I thought was um, pretty interesting is that if you take a look at the different academic years, so around 2014-15, um, we were around 21%. Our enrollment was about 300 or so. And then as our enrollment increased, um, the African-American student population decreased a little bit, but then by around 2018-19 school year, we've seen it start to increase again. And so with 2019-20, that was our highest um, enrollment of African-American students that year. Um, so now on this slide, what you're looking at is uh, the results of our Smarter Balanced Assessment or better known as our SBAC test that um, our third through sixth graders take each year. So these are the results from the 2018-19 year, because of course, 2019-20 is when COVID hit. And so they don't have the results in for that year. But for 2018 and 19, this slide shows a percentage for all students at REACH. So as you can see for our ELA portion, which is stands for English Language Arts, our uh, students, had 50, about 51% met or exceeded the standard for ELA. And for math, we had about 40% that met or exceeded. And that's for um, REACH students as a whole. Now, if you take a look at, now we just pulled out our African-American students for that same year, you will see that for ELA, we had 33% of our African-American students that met or exceeded the ELA standard and about 25% that met or exceeded for math. 
Now, if we look at the comparison between all students and then just our African American students, um, I just I want to pull your attention to just the ones that are above. So what this means is these are the domains on the SBAC test for literacy. So we have reading, we have writing, we have listening, and we have research and inquiry. So if you look at reading, um, for all students, 26% of all students scored above average for our reading portion of the SBAC. Only 11% of those African-American students scored above. So you see there was about a deficit of about 14%, a really big gap. If you look at writing, 21.5% of all students um, scored above. And looking at African or African American students, only 14% scored above for our writing. So again, another gap or deficit. If you take a look at the listening portion, 18.5% of all students scored above. And then we have 10% of our African American students that scored above. And then for research and inquiry, 24% of our students scored above and only 17% um, of our African-American students population scored above. So in all areas, what we were seeing was a big gap or a big deficit for our African-American students. Um, then we have comparison for our math. So, um, sorry, that should say math. So um, the different domains in math, we have concept and procedures, uh, problem solving and modeling, and communication, uh, re communicating reasoning. So again, you will see that 23% um, of all students scored above, and then you can see the deficits, only 8% of our African-American students scored above. Again, with the problem solving, 19% of all students, 10% of our African-American students were above. Communicating reasoning, 18%, and only 5% of our African-American students scored above. If you, I, there's also, we notice a correlation. Well, you saw that the reading, uh, the domains in reading were low. Well, that's also gonna have a correlation with math because in math, we have problem solving where they have to read word problems, um, communicating and reasoning. So all of both of those tie in with each other. And again, in all areas, we saw with our African-American population were big deficits or big gaps. All right, and one of the ways that we help the kids in the classroom is through intervention. And in this particular picture, you're watching one of our interventionists who is helping one of our students in the areas where he needs help. Next slide. All right, how can I help my child, my school, and my community? Well, Ms. Judy's about to tell you. Acts of service, okay? Acts of service are really, really important to Dr. Renty. And most important is that we have these committees. Some of these committees are ran by parents, governed by parents. And it's really important because they get to have some encouragement and some support from our school. So these are some of the acts of service that Dr. Renty has designed for our school. The first one is the school site council. Next one is the African American Parent Advisory Committee, the English Learner Parent Advisory Committee. We have a program called the Reach Outreach where we help our families that are struggling financially to buy uniforms or food or finances, okay? That means a lot to her to be able to take care of our families. We also have the REACH Governing Board. The goal here is to bridge the gap and increase family enrichment. It means everything to Dr. Renty to have parents involved because if you've ever come to any of our events where parents are involved, the children are smiling from ear to ear because mommy or daddy or grandma or grandpa or auntie are here with me. We need parents, family, and community involvement in everything we do because that's what's going to help our children to grow. This is an opportunity for you to be a leader in the school for your kid and with your kids. Okay, next one. This one is a quote from Creating Welcoming Schools by Jo Beth Allen. 
partnerships become culturally grounded when they are of the people, by the people, and for the people. It just won't work to guess at the local cultures and to fix in place cultural knowledge or reduce culture to food, festivals, and faces, shaded gray on our worksheets. What is family engagement activities that we're already doing at REACH? Well, here's just a few of them. We have back to school night, which because of COVID, we weren't able to do a big giant celebration, but it's really important that we have our back to school night. That's one of Dr. Renty's biggest things is back to school night. We have the teacher parent conferences, fundraisers, 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 fundraisers. That allows us to do a lot of things for the kids that we normally would not be able to do. Volunteers are everything. Uh, we send notes home. Uh, we have open house. We send newsletters out on a regular basis and we call parents to let them know what's going on at school. Um, so on this slide, this is just, um, I wanted to bring awareness to what you would be doing um, in terms of getting ready for our next meeting. And um, if you plan on um, nominating yourself for an electoral position, well, what will the next meeting look like? So based on the data, I would pose to you, what should the vision of our APAC be? So a vision statement describes the organization as it would appear in a future state. So like our te the team's destination. Then once the destination is determined, the plan to get there becomes easier to develop. So in saying that, that's, that is something that I want you all to think about um, for the future of our next meeting, especially the ones who are nominating themselves for an electoral position. You, what should our vision be? Based on the data, um, what do you think our destination should be um, in hopes of helping our African-American student population? And this is key. Part of planning for success is knowing the students and their families that you serve. And this picture right here is a perfect example of our leader visiting the classrooms. They don't know she's coming. She's coming in. She's learning names. She's finding out what they're doing. She's checking out the environment of the classroom. If you call in the morning and they say, Dr. Renty's in the classroom, this is what she's doing. All right, so that brings us towards um, the end, towards the end of our meeting. What I want to share with you uh, some reminders. So um, our parent and community member nominations are due by Thursday, February 18th at 4 p.m. Um, and if you haven't seen a nomination form on Dojo, I can also post it in the chat box as well. I'll do that at the end. Um, the actual election for parents and community members is the last week of February. So that closes on Friday, February 26th, um, at, right before midnight. And then our parents will be voted on by their parent peers. So um, you guys will all take a vote and vote on our electoral members. And then afterwards, we will bring all of the stakeholders together for our official, official first meeting, which will be March 18th. That will be our official meeting with our elected officials. And that's where um, you, got, you will move forward with uh, planning the rest of the meetings for the year, planning, trying to plan events, um, coming up with our vision, our mission for APAC, and also creating bylaws. Go ahead, Judy. Our leader wants everyone at REACH to be able to be treated equally with equity, liberation, no walls, separating us, and inclusion. Dr. Renty wants our staff, our students, our parents to be leaders through acts of service. And one thing I just remembered, the president of our school site council is in this meeting. So I want to welcome him to our meeting today. Hey, Debbie, now. 
Sorry, unmuting. Yeah, hi, thank you. Uh, Ms. Ms. Gascon can tell you guys, I've been excited for this to happen. I've been bugging her all year, uh, <laughs> trying to gently bug her because I know it's been a hard year. So thank you guys for having me here. You're welcome. Thanks for having me. All right, so that brings us to the end of our meeting. So I want to, or we want to open it up for questions, um, feedback, any concerns, um, or anything anyone wants to say uh, regarding our APAC. And you can just unmute and uh, dive in. Anyone have any questions? I have a question, Ms. Gaston. The person or the, the people that are running for a position, will they give like a brief speech or something like that so we can see who they are because um, in one of our Zoom sessions, or what is that going to look like? Well, we have our nomination forms, which I was just uh, copying now to put into the chat box. Um, I think once we have our nominations, we would we could probably maybe send them out so that you guys can see who's running, okay. um, and you'll be able to vote. Okay, Judy, how did um, school site council send that out? Um, there was a form, the form that you're going to give them. And mm -hmm. then there's a, another area where they put a brief description of why they feel that they would do good in this particular position, their background, their history, their involvement in past or present schools. And then that information will go along all the parents so they can read about all of the nominees and then they vote. And I'll just jump in there and add Ms. Gascon that we also had um, the election via Zoom. So we allowed everyone to come onto a Zoom call. So that would also give us an opportunity to see um, who the people that are running for the particular, particular positions are. And then um, we casted a vote. We put the person in the waiting room and then we casted a vote with the rest of the members. And then we invited them back in and we shared the results. Oh, perfect. Yeah, we could definitely do it. So I just pulled up the nomination form. So here's what it looks like. I also posted the link um, in the chat box. So if you would like to nominate yourself, um, you would just go ahead and click on the link and it's here for you. It gives a little explanation of um, what we talked about earlier. Um, and then you would just nominate yourself. And again, like Mr. Finley said, uh, we could definitely hold another Zoom um, where you can see the everyone who is running and then we'd be able to uh, have a vote. Thanks very much. Yeah, definitely. Any other questions? Uh, Ms. Gaspon, I have a quick question. Um, yeah. A lot of the stuff that's already that was in the presentation, I'm assuming is stuff from that you guys are building off of from last year. And I know some of it has to be adapted to this year. Uh, so my question is really, um, how much are we going to adapt for the current year? How long are we expecting to need those certain adaptations? And um, or are we thinking that students being remote learning or at least some of them being remote learning is going to be short lived and, and we really should focus on long term solutions for the future. Just kind of where, where is your mind? I don't need specific solutions now, but just kind of where are we thinking? Yeah, that's definitely a great question and a loaded question because I think uh, all us teachers have been having that on our mind as well. Um, it's like, what is this going to look like? Um, definitely for sure, long term, we want to see that. Um, this year, it's it's going to be hard to tell uh, what this year will look like. Um, and I don't know if maybe Dr. Inti wants to jump in or Mr. Finley on how really, I mean, we definitely are looking at long-term and we want to, because we've seen this data, this data that I showed you, we've been kind of seeing these type of results for the past year or two, couple of years. So this is definitely something that we want to work on and looking at adapting to long-term to really lift up our African-American students 
um, test scores. And also in past meetings, we have discussed or looked at what exactly is leading to these lower test scores. We kind of want to dive deeper into, well, what's causing this? We talked, you saw in the beginning of the presentation how um, our goal is to kind of look at chronic absenteeism and um, all of that. And all of that we saw plays a part, like the data I showed you was just honestly a really small snippet of the data that we've compiled of everything that, everything that adds to our African-American student population and what's causing this. So I don't know if that fully answered your question, but definitely we're looking at long-term, but in the short term of things for like the rest of this year, we definitely want to um, start laying that foundation and coming up with ways that we can lift up their test scores and change the things that are um, affecting the low test scores and that gap. And I would just stamp what um, Ms. Gascon, Gascon said. We're definitely looking long term, even though I haven't been um, at REACH as long as Ms. Gascon, Dr. Antia and myself had, have had conversations um, around this particular topic. And it seemed to be like a trend for the past few years with regards to the lower performance around the African American group of students. So this year would be a little bit wonky, as we would say, to tell because like there are so many things happening right now. And the data that might come in this year may not actually reflect students full potential or it could um, actually be a disadvantage to their potential as well having to deal with COVID and distance learning etc so we use um, the latest data that we have to um, display the trend and that's why it hasn't been fully updated to most recent data and we're not even sure if kids will be able to take um, the SBAC test this year and if they are it's not going to be consistent with what has happened throughout the past years. So some kids might be able to do it from home. They might have the option of doing it at school. And that doesn't give us a good opportunity to um, compare the present data to the past years data, which has been consistent. So like Ms. Gaspin said, it's like a long-term goal or long-term goals that we have to bring um, the African-American population up to speed. Uh, do you guys mind sharing that slide once once more? Yeah, which which one? That sh that showcases some of the data you guys were just referring to. Yeah, um, this is enrollment. Let me go to the test scores. Um, that's going and just to confirm. A question was asked whether or not um the data the the table that says all students does that include the African-American students in that population there or no? This came from the California dashboard, but I would assume that when it says all students, that African-American students are included in that as well. That's correct. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know who asked to see this slide. Was this the slide that you're referring to? Yes. Yes. This is Candace. Thank you. Yes. Um, I'll also respond to how you pronounce your name, Calandra. Calandra's question. She asks, um, will the events plan be an effort to reach out to the parents of African American students to share what they're experiencing that may contribute to the data? Will Ms. Gascon, you want to answer that question, I guess, for us? Um, yes, definitely. Um, we definitely want to um that is our whole goal is reaching out to the parents. Um, what we did last year when we first started APAC, um, we did a big gallery night and we took a lot, a lot of this data that you see and we blew it up poster size and we set it up on easels and we just let the parents walk around and look at all the data and we gave them sticky notes and they could write uh, questions or concerns or thoughts about each of the data slides. And it was extremely, extremely 
successful and powerful because like Judy said um, on one side, it was a huge wake up call as to what is happening, what, um, what is happening with our African-American students, what's contributing to it. Um, like I said, we had data slides on absenteeism, suspension rates. It's like, it's so many other, it's so many outside sources that are contributing to these test scores and the parents were just really blown away. So, and like I said, you know, in our future meeting, we'll be able to really pull up all of the data that we've compiled. And it's just mind blowing to see everything that's contributing to their test scores. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's such a loaded, I guess, um, there's so much, so many factors. Yeah, yeah. My, I guess one of my uh, fears and concerns is how do we isolate and attack, right? Because there's so many factors. What are some of the, I mean, I guess, and that, that can be tabled for now. I'm just, it's hard to see these things and not immediately get into that, like, how yeah, do we fix yeah. it mode, right? Yeah. Um, what are some of the plans that have been put forth prior to today's meeting as far as, like I said, the isolation and attack of these different parameters and, and issues? Um, we we uh, plan, what we had planned for last year, what we did, um, we came up with, well, we had our parents come together. And like you said, like you said, it is hard not to just get in and say, okay, well, what do we need to do? Like, what can we do? And that's something that we did at, in our meetings in the past was, um, and it was great having those parents that came, having those conversations that we could all have together. Well, putting our heads together and saying, well, what can we do? Like, what's going to help them? And so we were able to do, um, we were thinking about well, and this was in the past pre-COVID, but um, like homework nights where, and we partnered with um, other teachers too and kind of had like SBAC help where we pulled the kids, pulled all the kids together and not only opened it to just our African-American students, but also um, other students, but having like um, SBAC nights where uh, we pull them together and help them or explain to the parents you know, what they're going to be seeing on their test. How can you help them on their test? Um, right before COVID hit, I had planned, or me and Judy had planned um, to have like a teacher night where we had teachers from all of the upper grades come and just have like a panel with our parents um, and talk about testing and what it looks like. And teachers were going to give their perspective and their, um, suggestions for how to get your child ready. What are some things you could do? Um, so that was some things that we had planned uh, right before COVID. But um, Mike, you were saying, I, I think it was Candice, sorry if, it, if that wasn't your name. Um, it's, it's hard not to just get, uh, get in and say, okay, we need to do this. What are we gonna do? How are we going to attack this? Because again, like you guys are saying, like the data is mind blowing. It's like, we have to you know, what can we do to help them? We need to get these scores up and help our students. The other, I guess, fear is um, not blaming of, you know, par parents and how do you get parents to, that are already stressed for time. Yeah. And and not put more blame in, in on them, right? It's, it's yeah. just such a delicate um, it is. situation. I'm, I'm excited though for, for the opportunity for this group and um, yeah, this will be great. I mean, and just to add to um, what Ms. Gascon already said about the plans pre-COVID, we try our best consistently at school to continue doing as much as we can on campus. So we dig into the data and we analyze on um, the gap and we see which students fall into the particular categories where there are gaps. And we try our best every day to prevent, to provide um, whatever learning supports we can provide for them on a continuous basis. 
whether it's pull out to pushing groups and for the support from our interventionist team. So those are some of the actions that we have taken on a daily basis to help um, close this gap as we work on other plans um, to get parents and other stakeholders involved. I, I want to say that the staff has done an amazing job. My kid's been to four schools in four years trying to find the right fit. Um, and you guys have been doing an amazing job. And I want to also comment that uh, not just the respect, but the admiration that the staff has for Dr. Renty under her leadership, it's authentic and you can tell. Uh, and I think that authenticity will transfer to the students as well. So they have plenty of leaders at at reach to look up to, um, but to what, uh, I don't, sorry, I don't remember that parent's name. The initials are CB. Um, to what she was saying though, there there is an urgency to the data, um, but there's also how do we change the, the long-term culture that's gonna come out of these students, right? How do we influence that culture to be, so that, you know, they're a few steps up and then their kids are a few steps above that and how do we continue to grow and, and, and form that trajectory that we want to put them on? And um, yeah, I was in the LPAC meeting uh, two weeks ago, I think, two or three weeks ago, and there was one parent there, um, and then you know myself and then the two teachers involved. And, and so again, how do we get awareness out? Yeah. I think that gallery idea is amazing. That's an awesome idea, uh, but how do we bring that to this, right? Uh, uh, we're in an era where parents who are going to attend the Zoom meetings are parents that attend Zoom meetings all day, every day for their work. And so they're getting burned out. Um, and it's the same thing with the, and, and this isn't just reach, this is at every school. The parents who attend the homework nights and the teacher nights and all that stuff are the parents that we already have engaged. They're already involved and they're already concerned and they're already doing their best and we can give them more tools. But how do we reach the students whose parents are tired and you know they're they're coming home from a second job and they just don't have the energy for it or they don't have the technological know-how or they don't my kids in first grade and i'm having trouble teaching him how to read miss gasco and i'm like stop sending us his hard homework you know so how do we <laughs> so it, it, but again right parents some parents don't have the skills to help their students and so how do we reach into the house and help them in the home and, it, and change the culture in the home i think is going to be the key and it's a question that it's a question that Ms. Dumeyer and I are are asking and talking about uh, with regards to LPAC, and I think it's going to be the same thing with with the APAC. Um, I love that gallery night. That's such an amazing idea. I've never seen that before, and it's it really does bring a glaring awareness to the urgency of the issues. Um, but now, how do we get those other parents that that we well, still haven't been able to reach? Aaron, I think. Um also providing them with data points on behavioral changes that have to happen at home. For example, screen time, right? Yeah. While it, it's very convenient for all of us, you know, perhaps the data that supports, these are the things that help our students grow, right? Truly um, taking the time to read, even, you know, finding those things that are interesting for both reading together. So, you know, I, I mean, these are obviously not the point of this meeting, but I think there's opportunities to expose behavioral changes at home, right? And that and that's going to be super critical. And how do we get parents engaged where really they don't have to come on campus, but perhaps you didn't know that your, your child should only have an hour worth of screen time a day, right? Obviously outside of the, the COVID situations, mm -hmm. right? So now if they're not on screen time, what are they doing with that time? Right. The, you know, it, it's one of two things that are gonna happen after that. So I think we have to also inform because there, there may be an assumption that many parents know things, mm -hmm. right? And, and that's maybe not true and just changing trajectories as far as things that were traditional that have to um, change. But uh, yes, I am trying to. <laughs> <Yes>. on. <laughs> I just wanted to add to um, one year we had the SBAC night where Ms. Sanchez taught the parents what is SBAC and what do the scores mean? And, 
and et cetera. And then one night we had um, a night where the teachers, where parents came out to learn how to use computers. There were a lot of didn't know how to use the computers or how to look up certain things to help their kids. Those yeah. are the kind of activities that APAC parents can organize. And, and with our support, of course, um, the whole goal is for parents to get together you know, just like, um, you know, you'd be surprised how some children can't wash their clothes and affects attendance. And so we've got to figure out how can we get, you know, parents who can't wash clothes, how can we get their kids, you know, clothes washed? These are things that you do within the committee that you try to find out solutions together. Um, how, you know, maybe what you're doing at home. I had a parent ask me the other day, how can I make homework fun? Well, I just thought about the things I used to do for my children. And he was like, ah, oh, that's a good idea. That was an APAC meeting right there. You know, and so those are the kind of things that we want to do in the APAC meeting. We want parents to talk to parents while the teachers and the administrators are there to help also. So the whole function is, is what I know is true is once parents get involved, parents talk to other parents, and then they talk to other parents. And before you know it, we'll have a flood of parents making sure that these events and these or, or this organization grows and benefits the children. Thank you so much, Ms. Judy. Um, I also want to touch on what Aaron is saying right now. And he speaks about, I guess, reinforcing with the kids, which then brings that excitement at home. And we have seen that, um, you know, once we get the kids involved, kids go home and they really nag their parents. I want you at school. I want you to come to this event. I want you to come to that event. So we'll continue brainstorming some ideas in which we can probably incentivize students. And once the students are incentivized, then we can get them to encourage and motivate their parents. And then another idea um, we can definitely talk about at REACH is considering parent hours, where we make it like a a thing at reach where parents are expected to give a certain amount of parent hours um, per month or per year to show their involvement. And we can come up with ways where this parent, these parents always can be on campus or even at home. So if you're reading to your kid every night for 20 minutes, send us a picture or video of you doing that. If you're taking them to the library or to the museum, finding different ways um, to show us that you are doing your part at home because we know many parents aren't able to make it on campus, but we can still encourage and motivate them to do other things outside of, com of campus that can show us that they are trying to help us um, add towards closing the gap that we are currently seeing. Thank you, Mr. Finley. Um, I don't know, Dr. Inti, are you still there? Yeah, I am. I was actually going to jump in. So okay. I've got a little lag over here and there's some background noise, but I just wanted to stamp what the parents were saying, which was super um, encouraging just to hear Delfino and Candace. And then I'm looking at the thread as well. And I think Candace precisely like this is the place to have those conversations. And if we can get parents to the table, we feel like you know, we can get those changes, you know, made um, and make positive changes for the kids. And so we know that as a school, um, we're not going to be able to be as effective with the students without the parents involved, without the parental involvement, <laughs> hence the APAC. And so the, those are all really good ideas. I think um, uh, offering suggestions on, on what's, you know, what can help the kids at home. Some of the ideas, as we've said before, you know, the, 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 uh, trainings and the assistance. Uh, there's some things we've done in the past. And again, because parents haven't had time, we've, they've, they've kind of fallen off and maybe we can resurrect through Zoom. But, you know, we've had um, math nights to show parents how to um, help their students with the Singapore math. We've done the SBAC and things like that. But we've got to get, but again, as Delfino said, it's the same parents over and over again, you know, that probably don't need the help necessarily. And so our struggle in the last couple of years has been like, how do you get to the reach those parents that need this information? And so we're, we feel like um, Mr. Finley had alluded to a lot of the extra services that we provide during the day for those kids. And we're trying to maximize that time, right? With our, we have a full staff of interventionists, um, an average of one per class. Um, that's supporting our students. And so with those students, like our African-American students that are, 
you know, need to make up the largest of a gap, that being the focus. But of course that service is for all kids and it benefits kids, but it's still, it's not enough. I mean, we have to get the parents involved. So this is what APAC is about. I'm excited about this conversation. I feel like, you know, we're here to support this committee to be like all it wants to be, honestly. And um, finding ways to reach the parents where they are is really the goal. And so we're hoping for synergy and to be able to come into the room and, you know, put our heads together and, and come up with some things that maybe we haven't thought about yet in order to reach our parents. We feel like the way, as I land this plane, the way that we teach kids was really intended to, um, it's very, they call it TPR, so total physical response. So we're doing a lot of hands on a lot of movement. We allow for kids to be themselves and ex fully express themselves in the classroom. And we feel like that caters to our African-American students. And so we have done a lot of things to meet the needs of all of our kids. And we're just a little bit baffled to see their, their, the slide and the regression in learning. Now we're not sure if it's, you know, apples to apples. And that's the part of the data we want to look at this year. Like how long have those, those kids been with us, you know, so for the kids that have been re with reach for three years, those African-American students, are they doing better than the kids that just got here? So that's data we still need to look at. But in the interim, we have kids that are failing. And so we have to make sure we're doing everything that we can to do, you know, to help those kids succeed. So we're looking at all facets. We're here and open for dialogue um, <clears throat> to see what we can do as a team, as we partner with, with the families um, to meet the need. And so we've had meetings during the day. We've had meetings after school, various times after school, like we offer for, you know, dinner and pizza and whatever it takes to get parents in the room. And we'll continue to do that until we get this, this committee off the ground. Um, our APAC, I heard Mr. Delfino say there was one person in the room. One thing about our reach, if you look at our LPAC scores, I said APAC, but it's LPAC. For our English learners, we have some of the highest scores in the state. Our EL kids do really well at reach because of that TPR and the hands-on. So now our next conundrum is, is how do we get all of our kids to be as successful? And I know that these kids have the ability. We talk about high expectations here. We just got to find that secret sauce. And we believe that parent involvement is the missing piece. So we're open, we're excited, we're glad for the people on the call. And we'll work with you guys to try to, you know, solicit even more people to participate so that we can make a difference. Thank you, Dr. Antti. Does anyone else have any more questions or comments? I'm sorry. I know I talk a lot. I'm so sorry, guys. <laughs> I have one more question. Um, I, I didn't say this earlier, but I also want you guys to, to understand that while this is uh, specific to your community, your community is not in isolation. So tomorrow we have a, a school site council meeting. And you guys should be taking, and I, I've already asked Ms. Gasco and, and Ms. Jenkins was at the last one, but to attend those meetings and to report back what's happening in these committees. But you as parents also have a right to go to those meetings and voice your concerns and opinions because it shouldn't just be something that, that only this committee is concerned about. The entire school should be concerned about it. Somebody said, uh, have we talked to other schools to see how they're being successful with their students? And I think, where students, where, where black students thrive the most is in mostly black schools and those communities where their culture is celebrated and they're treated as a priority. And so the same thing needs to happen here. Um, there are a whole bevy of different unique uh, communities and cultures at reach and that's all great, but I don't think we should isolate one from the other or prioritize one over the other. I think they're all equally important and they're, all the students are equally urgent. And so I, I, I encourage you guys to go to those meetings and sometimes they're a little dry, I'm not gonna lie, they're a little bit, especially right now we're establishing rules and, and we're defining roles and things like that. So sometimes it's a little dry, but your concern should be heard there as well as here. I agree with that, Delfino. I think that it's it's not an isolation and we wanna make sure parents understand that we're they're welcome to all of these committee me meetings. We're trying to, um, uh, bring all of the committees together. We don't want it to, it's just, you know, we don't want to have these silos. That's not what we're about. Like we're very much about inclusion and, and diversity. And so I just wanted to stamp what you said. And I want to say that I agree with that. Um, 
but I do feel like one of the things that we're charged with, can you guys hear me? Okay. Yes. I don't know if I've frozen. Can y'all hear me? No. Yeah, hear you. Oh, okay. So, so, so one of the things that, that we have to do when you look at the data is you say, okay, who needs the most? Like, where is the gap? And that's why you see an African-American committee and you see an LCAP PAC meeting committee. You don't see other committees because the other students are actually doing really well. And so we just, you know, we're charged to put additional resources where those resources are needed. And so that's why you see this committee here. But that's, again, still we want to encourage all of you to show up to the, the REACH School Site Council, which we're excited about participate in those meetings. Um, that's a more of a governance meeting that, you know, you're at the table um, and able to um, you really affect change at the school. And then this is primarily, we want everyone to be concerned with the success of our African-American and all of our students for sure. And again, this could be any, any subgroup, anybody struggling at REACH, we're going to give that focus to. And remember that while we're giving the focus to this group of kids, we're also still providing the same, you know, we're still providing an amazing amount of services to any kid that's struggling. So, and that's all I wanted to add. And also, this is not an isolated issue to children, correct? Is it for standardized testing in general? Isn't it true that African Americans typically will test lower in, in most standardized tests? I remember even when I was taking like my GRE back in the day that it was a huge hurdle. And oftentimes it's, well, from what I remember, it was due to cultural understandings and comprehensions of how questions are even asked. So I think one of the parents had talked about prepping. Has that um, been explored? Just yeah, you get on with that. And so uh, let me just tell you guys. And so we, we, so we were trying to see if this is a trend and then COVID happened. About two or three years ago, our African-American students were making like triple digit gains. Like we were actually starting to outpace the district state in terms of like performance. And, um, you know, we were closing that gap. And then I think uh, then all of a sudden we start seeing a reversal of that. And so before COVID hit, we were wondering if, if some of the interventions that we had were we're actually being effective. And so, but then there, we don't have that SBAC data to make that comparison. We can look, we're probably, we'll look at our star data and see, but anyway, um, because of some of the things that you've just said, and so teaching them how to dissect and disaggregate the test questions, understand what's being asked. And so that's what we do whole group, right? And so those, those are some of the, uh, some of the knowledge that we have as we're helping all of our students, including our African-American students to be able to, to dissect. But again, I think at REACH, initially we were seeing that growth and then the growth, then we saw the slide. So I guess for us, and we won't know for another year, was that slide permanent or was it just like, just a, a blurb in the screen? We're not, we're not sure, but we can't let, let years keep passing before we address the issue. But to your point, that's a yes, absolutely. And, and looking at those other ways to teach how to take a test are also very important. Go ahead, Paula. I know you've been trying to say something. No, it's no problem. I didn't realize my hand. Oops, I think she that It was stuck like that. Hi, everyone. I wanted to find out as far as going forward, even once COVID is over, will there be um, something like this available for parents because like I, I right now I'm at home but I so I'm in Orange County so I come back and forth and so by the time I come home and pick up my daughter everything's already over with so is there a way that we can have um, meetings like all the meetings whether it's school side council whatever where we can have dual where you those parents that can become right versus those parents that are still at work, maybe they take a break or they're driving. Do you know if you'll be able to do that going forward? I kind of want you, you, you were kind of in and out, but I think what you were asking is if we could do dual uh, once COVID is over is having uh, aside from an in-person meeting, but also having it on Zoom. I'm assuming, is that what you were asking? Yeah, we could definitely do that yes. for the parents. Sorry, that my, my yeah, sorry, my my internet keeps it keeps I keep getting knocked out, so I'm sorry. Uh, that's probably what it, what it is. I I got glitched up there. 
So yeah, no, but that's definitely a great idea. Okay. Because Zoom definitely wasn't this big when we were doing our in-person meetings. So now <laughs> it's like Zoom everywhere. So yeah, that would definitely be a great idea is to um, have a Zoom within those uh, in-person meetings for the ones who can't make it in person. Absolutely. And I'm gonna jump in and respond to all Thank you. that um, Bianca shared with us with regards to test prep. And I want you to know that we, uh, we have already started um, our test prep at school where teachers are rolling out certain practice questions to students on a daily basis before they go into um, the main context of the instruction. However, I think we can push ourselves a little bit harder as you spoke about like confidence and getting kids, um, I guess, more mentally prepared for the assessment. Um, we can dive deeper into making sure that they understand, um, better understand test taking strategies Right, because sometimes I feel like kids get nervous during testing times and it's not reflecting in the end result like you might have said. So we can definitely add on to what we're already doing and ensure that we provide them with some test taking strategies to help build their confidence to hope that that contributes to a higher achievement um, on these tests. Absolutely, they do do that as well, Mr. Finley, but that's something we can you know, make ensure that it's still happening, right? Yeah. Yeah. I had a quick question for Dr. Renty um, or Mr. Finley. I wasn't sure if either of you know, do, uh, do our STAR and like other internal testing results, um, do they show the same types of deficits? Have we broken them out by um, like African-American students versus other students to see if this is like an overall learning problem or, or is there, um, is there a typical deficit with the SBAC? Like is SBAC, someone else had said, like I know SATs, for example, um, can be biased against um, students of color. So I'm just curious if that has any bearing on the results. Since our STAR data and the SBAC, the STAR mirrors SBAC, it's similar. And it's interesting because we don't see the disparity as much in the younger grades as we start seeing it as the kids get older, right? So that's another conundrum, like how do we figure that piece out? Yeah. But it is similar. Thank you. All right, so it's 6.58, so I just want to wrap up. Is there any last minute uh, questions or comments that anyone has? before we kind of uh, wrap up and in this meeting. I just wanted to say, Ms. Tesson, that I think this meeting was very helpful because now with COVID, it's very difficult. And my concern is uh, if, when, if the grades or the testing scores were pretty bad, you know, back then, I remember about a year ago going through the various um, points and scores that the kids, the African-American African -American kids had gotten, it was pretty low. I'm imagining now, because for me, you know, Zion would get all fours, but now it's like, oh, I can't believe his report card, his last report card. So it's very difficult, you know, with our current world right now. So I think, you know, getting together, supporting each other, supporting parents, supporting each other could be very helpful for our children because it's, it's our current world is just very, it's a struggle altogether, even with reading books. I mean, he's read all the books we have and the library is closed now. And, you know, it's really a struggle now across the board. So I just think that us working together and supporting each other with various ideas that we talked about will be helpful for our children. Absolutely, I concur. Mm -hmm. Yep, definitely, I agree. Thank you. Definitely. Um, there's all, I do want to mention, have you looked at, at, has Zion been on Epic or does his class have an Epic account? Because that's also um, a good resource for him. Yes, to he find. goes. Yes, he does. Okay. Okay. But I know they have a time limit. Which Yes, he does. Thank you. The thing okay. about it, he's unfortunately because there's Uh oh, I think we lost her. I'm sorry, my phone is going in and out. Oh, there you go. Sorry, what did you say, Miss Gaston? Oh, uh, we had lost you. You were saying, unfortunately. What were you saying? I'm sorry. 
you said unfortunately and then it cut out. Oh, yeah, he does a lot of, uh, I have him go on epic most of the time, but a lot of times with the screen time and his eyes, I just don't allow him to go on as much as he should, but now that's what he's been using more because okay. of, you know, all the books he read and, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. All right, and I saw, uh, was it Calandra? Did you have a comment? Yes, I just wanted to say um, this, the presentation was very informative and um, just like one of the other parents said, it's been really, it's been a new set of challenges with COVID and everything. And I know I was feeling very um, overwhelmed and, and, you know, sad for my daughter, you know, because it's been really hard and I'm just happy that there's a place to come where we can all, you know, discuss all of those difficulties. Yeah. So thank you guys. <laughs> definitely. Thank you for coming and attending and being Absolutely. able to share. This is definitely what we want, you know, and we want to try to reach out to more parents. Mm -hmm. you know, like someone mentioned, those parents who don't come all the time or don't come to a meeting at all, like we want to reach them and have them come in and share experiences and put our heads together to try to uh, come up with some solutions. Mm -hmm. So definitely, but I, so I thank you all for attending. Thank you so much. Um, I hope you guys will consider nominating yourselves um, for an electoral position so we could really, um, you know, come together like we did tonight and put our heads together and really uh, find some solutions on what we could do as a community on um, helping our students. And, you know. Hey, there was one more question. Oh, was there? Yeah. She had her hand raised. Candace Williams, I think, something like that. Yeah, hi guys, it was me. I was just, I put my hand down because um, the girls kind of said the same things I was gonna mention. I got on a little late and I'm not sure when those test scores and stuff were from, but um, agreeing with Zion's mom that like even with Titus, he's always, high honors, really good scores. And I got his report card and I told Miss Kirkland like, oh my God, I can't believe this. But a lot of it was being at home in the beginning and just the distractions in the house, the dog, his brother doing his work and things like that. So hopefully as the kids get like back into the classroom more, we'll see like better results. And um, I, I like the idea too, of being able to do a Zoom even when things get better, just because with the kids and stuff, there's always a lot going on. Like I don't live that far, but I'm not always available to come back to the school at that time. My son has practice and things like that. So, um, but if I could do this, I could sit at practice and um, be involved in the meetings and, and stuff. So yeah. thank you. Good, that's great to hear, thank you. So yeah, thank you for suggesting that. So we definitely, um, that's, you know, no problem at all having that Zoom option, you know, when whenever we do. Um, get back to having like in-person meetings and stuff. So being able to um, appeal to both. Before we go, Ms. Gascon, can a parent nominate themselves for more than one position? Uh, yes. Yeah. The more the merrier for us to choose from. <laughs> so definitely, definitely. Um, so I put the link for the form in the chat box. Um, you may have to scroll up some to find it. Um, I could also try to put it in there again if uh, you missed it. But um, I want to thank everyone for coming. Um, thank you so much. It definitely always helps to have these conversations um, and just have having um, being able to hear everyone else's input on things and coming up with solutions. So uh, me and Judy, thank you guys very much for coming. Um, Thank you guys. This is yes, wonderful. This is wonderful. Yeah. Really okay. Bye. All right. Bye, everyone. Bye. -bye. Thank you. Yes. Did you call me, Mr. Finley? Yeah, I was just asking if you can stay on after the parents exit. Yeah. Sorry, I'm trying to exit here. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> Bye. Have a good night. Bye, you too.
Wow, that was fantastic, girls. I'm sorry. Stop the recording. This guy's gone. Oh. <laughs> okay. Yeah.